Hi there, welcome back to The Perspective on Bonita Satu. I'm Blaise Sog with Luigi Pralanga. Uh, we were talking before the break about uh, the role of civilians. Um, can you tell me what kind of opportunities are there for Indonesians who'd like to get involved? Well, there are plenty and various uh, ways to contribute and uh, aiming uh, for uh, career opportunities in uh, peacekeeping, humanitarian relief uh, missions, development and assistance uh, projects. Uh, it's very important for uh, for those who are challenged to participate and for those who are aspiring uh, a career opportunities in this sector to prepare themselves better professionally. Um, career opportunities in this particular sector is pretty much like uh, finding uh, a job in the corporate world here in Indonesia. Mm. It's very important for the applicants to understand how their skill sets, uh, skill sets uh, are matching the requirement. Uh, and secondly, how the relevance of their competencies uh, correlates to the job descriptions. Mm. Uh, and also, working environments, because working in such post-conflict assignment is not walk in the park. It is challenging. It can be intense. It, yes, definitely intense. And also the perspective of, of a mindset needs to be addressed properly because uh, not only that we're going to be professionally challenged, we would be psychologically or personally challenged once we are uh, on the ground mm -hmm. because uh, it's like working in, 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 in hot water. You're going to see, you're going to experience yes, conditions I, that aren't ideal. That's right, that's right. Uh, the pressures are tremendous, the working conditions is harsh, climate is definitely different, okay, and the separations from, from the family or from the social uh, environment that we used to be uh, enjoying here back home than the ones over there. You yeah. may be living in a container size of accommodation, 20 foot container, you may be living there for months where everything is there and then once you open the door it's probably in the middle of a desert or you will be living in, uh, in the middle of a uh, forest, a jungle. Mm. Uh, or you may be living in a, a, a movement restricted uh, areas. You can't go anywhere. You work, you live, you sleep there for a number of months. Then you can go home. So these particular of working environment settings pose an individual or any applicants into a serious challenge that they need to cope apart from functioning Professionally, so they've got to they've got to deal with the stresses of a deployment. That's it's right. It's not a indeed. It's indeed. A, not another walk in the park. No, 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 definitely. So, if I was a twenty-three-year-old graduate, uh, Indonesian graduate, what steps would you take? Decent English, got a degree. How do you get into this? The organizations that uh, operates in in peacekeeping, humanitarian, or development assistance program pose a lot of uh, opportunities. They have their own port recruitment portals. It's very easy and, and, and convenient actually for uh, interested applicants to apply themselves directly. There are numerous of job posts. All they can do, read and understand the job descriptions and apply online. I know that part of the, the difficulties is uh, competencies in English because most of these assignments are either English speaking, it's mandatory, and they might need uh, a French speaking uh, requirement, or Arabic speaking, or uh, areas in which uh, national language are, uh, I mean, they are practiced mm. over there. Well, you, you wouldn't, as Anna said, you would never be with just Indonesians. You, yeah. you, you would be with people from, of all nationalities. Oh, definitely. Once you are working in uh, such uh, assignment, your next door or your next cubicle colleagues might be somebody from uh, Zimbabwe or from Russia, or it's very uh, diverse in terms of nationalities. And it is very important that your uh, competency in communication, especially in English and all other five uh, languages like Spanish, French, uh, Chinese, and mm -hmm. Arabic. When you have that competency in other language other than English, it is to your uh, competitive advantage. And also, uh, you might require to learn the local language as well, because you are interacting with the beneficiaries of the local populations, or mm -hmm. the government officials, should you be interacting with them. 
So it is very important, not only just the substantive uh, field of your expertise, may it be communications, finance, or uh, political uh, uh, affairs, all those kind of stuff. So it's important for them to apply directly and improve their skill set into a presentation of their uh, resume to become more appealing to the recruitment managers. So their competition is better. From the time, uh, you know, young graduate want to get in, from the time you, you kind of put your hand up and you start getting involved in the system, how long un until someone gets deployed? From a person that starts to click the application and send the application, usually three to six months. The Quick. reason, yes, to wait. Uh, that depends on the nature of the post itself. Usually, post-conflict assignment or development uh, or humanitarian relief organizations when you are applying in the field, it's usually quicker because they need somebody quick and many. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, if you wanted a quicker um, turn, I would call that uh, processing time, apply the most dangerous assignment because they need somebody quickly. They need people. Yes, and then when you are called, you have to be ready. Usually within two months, you have to deploy, to get deployed. So be ready for a quick call. Well, okay, let's go to break now. We're going to revisit this in just a moment. Uh, stay tuned to the Perspective on Badi Sartu. We'll be right back. <laughs> 